Your next task will be to build or rebuild the canopy above the entrance. To see it better, set the viewport to camera 2. Render the scene if you wish. The metallic structure is made of I-beams and T-beams. The modeling workflow here still relies on splines for the most part, but does not use renderable splines. Renderable splines are confined to circular or rectangular cross sections, which are of no help here. Select the existing canopy group and hide it or delete it. You will be creating a new one from scratch. You may also want to hide the mural you created in the last movie. You will start with the base I-beam structure supporting the trusses. Simply draw a rectangle in the top view that goes from the centers of the two main pillars to the wall of the warehouse. Make sure this rectangle is not set to renderable splines. Adjust the height of the rectangle so that it sits on top of the pillars. To turn this simple looking spline into an I-beam structure, you will use the sweep modifier. With the rectangle selected, apply a sweep modifier. The spline now has a volume with a default L-shaped cross-section. You have many presets to choose from. Ultimately, you can even draw a custom 2D shape to use as a cross-section. In this case, you need an I-beam, so choose the wide flange option. Next, you adjust the alignment. By default, the cross-section is aligned to its center. This means the center of the eye sweeps across the rectangle path. This is why the beams go through the pillars. You could move the spline up, or you can redefine the sweep point using the alignment presets. In this case, the bottom center alignment point should work fine. With this done, you can now proceed to adjust the parameters of the I-beam. If you are not planning a very close shot, then set the corner radius to zero to reduce the number of rendered polygons. In the case of linear beams like these, you may want to disable smoothing, especially along the path. Next, you build the trusses. Start in the left view by building a rectangle on top of the structure you just created. Convert the rectangle into an editable spline. Set all its vertices to corner. Move the top segment towards the front to cover the building's entrance. Select the two roof segments and divide them to add a vertex to each. Adjust the vertices to approximate a curve. Make sure you are still in the Modify panel at a vertex subobject level. Using 3D Snap in Endpoint mode, create three separate lines that extend from the vertex over the pillar to the three vertices along the top curve. Exit Snap Mode and Subobject Mode when done, and apply a Sweep Modifier. It picks up the last cross-section and alignment you use, so you need to change that. Set the alignment to Center, and the cross-section to T. Set the angle to minus 90. There's one more thing to adjust. The left and right sharp angles shouldn't be welded like that. Go back down the stack to the editable spline vertex level, enable show end result to see the end effect, and select the two vertices in question. In the geometry rollout, choose the break tool. This will unweld the vertices. Make slight adjustments to the vertices until you are satisfied. Exit subobject mode when done. Adjust the parameters of the sweep modifier and position it so that it sits on top of the I-beam frame. You can still make necessary changes to the original spline to get the structure where you want it. To duplicate this component, 
place it to the left of the I-beam structure. Use the Array tool and set the count to 8. Make sure the clone type is set to Instance and click the Preview button. Adjust the X value until the rightmost clone reaches the right edge of the I-beam structure. Click OK to confirm. Next, you create the corrugated metal sheet that goes on top of the trusses. You'll still need a set of beams to strengthen the corrugated metal sheet, but you will actually use one to create the other. In the left view, draw a line with corner vertex types, which follows the curve of the trusses. In the top view, position the line to the right, and extrude it to cover the whole structure. Convert the object to an editable poly. Before you give the sheet thickness, go to Edge Mode and select one of the horizontal edges in the top view. Click Ring to select all horizontal edges. Click the Create Shape from Selection button. Give the new shape a name such as I Support and set its type to Linear. Exit Subobject Mode and use the Shell modifier to give the metal sheet a thickness. Using Select from Scene, select the spline you just extracted. Apply a Sweep modifier, choose the white flange cross-section and adjust its parameters and alignment. You'll still need some minor rotation adjustments. Go down the stack to Editable Spline, Spline Level. Use Show End Results to view the eye cross sections. Use Move and Rotate to adjust the positioning of the individual eye beams. Apply the blue metal material to the beams and the corrugated metal material to the top sheet. You'll need to apply mapping coordinates to see the results. Align the mapping gizmo to the top view and adjust its size. Select all the components you created and group them under the name Canopy. In the third and last movie, you will use similar but slightly different techniques to build a curtain wall.